Oh, hello. And what's this, you might ask yourself? The vanilla disease? Yes, believe it or not, we are indeed playing Vanilla Empire. And yes, it has its disadvantages sometimes, but it's really quite a classic game. And when it first came out, it was rather revolutionary. And it's got some terrific content as well. We, we can't undermine that fact. It is a uh, superb for its time when it came out. It, it was really ambitious. And I, I do enjoy still playing a bit of vanilla here and there, taking a break from mods and things to kind of float back and forth, give yourself that variety. So we're going to do a vanilla campaign, a, a grand campaign, as the best nation in the game. Great Britain. It's right in the title. Great, indeed. We're going to do the short campaign. Capture and hold 25 regions by the end of uh, the year 1750, including England, Georgia, Ireland, Gibraltar, New France, Hindustan, Scotland, oh dear, Florida, and Leeward Islands. Starting in 1700, uh, we're going to do a hard, hard campaign, because in vanilla it's just, it's necessary. Gameplay options, we're not having any of this silly stuff. We don't need to see people bumbling about. And uh, Great Britain is not a natural creation, but the marriage of separate kingdoms and peoples. The new nation has been through a century of unparalleled turbulence. An unwelcome joining of England and Scotland, religious strife, civil wars, an executed king, military dictatorship, a populist monarch restored, and the overthrow of a second king. Less than 15 years ago, the hated Catholic James II was forced into exile in the Glorious Revolution, and a Protestant monarchy restored. Huzzah. A short, vicious war in Ireland put paid to any chance of a Catholic Stuart restoration. That's as much as we're going to read into it there. Let's go ahead and jump into the campaign. This was the first nation I ever played in Empire when I when I first got the game back 2012 or 2011. Must have been one of them. Either either 2011 or 2012, but it is fun. Your first priorities as an oh, island yes. nation should be to ensure you have adequate naval defenses in place. Absolutely. As a navy is the key to protecting your shores. The only way. Beyond that. Maintain friendly relations with other Protestant nations, such as the United Provinces, Hanover, Prussia, and Sweden. Ah, yes. As the ever-present threats from Catholic France and Spain may require a joint action by allies in the near future. France ain't a threat. In addition to securing your position at home, look to the preservation of your colonies in America and the Caribbean. Hooray! France and Spain are always interested in expanding their overseas territories. Here we give you quite a bit here. Will provide easy pickings for less scrupulous nations. Will they now? Protected. I don't think there so. There's so much unexploited territory in the Indian subcontinent. Yeah, it's fun Gain there. Get hold here before your rivals do. It can the be quite interesting. The Mughal Empire is on the verge of falling apart. On the way out. It is still important to move swiftly. Is it? The up and coming Maratha Confederacy is ready to pounce and forge an empire of their own. So, allying with them against the Mughals mm -hmm. would be a useful strategy. They can be quite strong. It is especially vital to act in India before the French gain a foothold and begin to work against you as they have in America. The frogs. What the frogs be doing in India? We're the ones who have tea, not them. Well, welcome to the vanilla campaign. And as you can tell, things look pretty nice. We're using reshade, so that's the only reason why this looks acceptable in 2023. The Gregorian calendar, what's going on here? Many Protestant nations in Europe, with the notable exception of Great Britain, us, have grudgingly adopted the reforms to the Julian calendar, first proposed in the Papal Bull of 1582 by Pope Gregory XIII. That sounds unlucky. The new calendar seeks to correct the gradual drifting forward of the seasons and the Feast of Easter. I do like an Easter ham. Under the old Julian calendar, which was 11 days longer than its civil equivalent. That seems biased. The Gregorian reforms removed the extra days and inserted a leap year. That's where we get that shit from. 
an extra day every four years to further correct the previous drift. We do have to fix ourselves, right? Have a peak, 3740 coming in, and we're going to lower the tax rate to help our towns grow more and our people be a bit happier too. Our cabinet off the bat is pretty good. It's not terrible. So I don't think we need to touch it. We, we, uh, we don't need to fiddle there. But we can definitely get some trade. Now, let's try to get a trade and an alliance with Prussia. I'm just curious if we can. Oh, trade. Hmm. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Um, let's do the Maratha first. And the Ottomans, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we don't have to pay anything for those. Can we trade with Austria? 430. Sure. And Prussia? Trade with you? They're, they're now delighted, I'm sure. The Mughals, 290, why not? It's just scrapings. Next thing we're going to do, you might be wondering and scratching your head going, eh? Why? Well, we're canceling the alliance with Austria because at the start they always pull you into this insane, massive European war with Prussia and Poland and all that rubbish. And I don't feel it. I don't want to deal with it. We're, we're going to be colonial in this play. Bye-bye. I'm sorry. Did we hurt your feelings? Good thing we got the trade before we couldn't. That's, uh, yeah. So we're now only allied with the Dutch, Hanover, and Portugal. If Portugal brings us into war with the Marathas, which is very likely, as the Marathas will most likely attack Portugal, we may reject it. And that's because right now we want to focus on cleaning up America first. The Iroquois will declare war on the 13 colonies, and the Huron will invade me in Rupert's land. So we want to try and hold those. Let's move our troops all into London. So we'll join them all together. Bring Henry Henri de Mass over. We've got this wonderful grand fleet in Europe. And we're going to pop it into Portsmouth. I've been to Portsmouth. It's quite, uh, quite nice. What have we got going on here? Yes, we also have these two fleets in America. Merge them together and send them down towards the pirates. Because something happens here, and you're, you'll see what happens. The Dutch attack them. It asks us if we want to take part. We decline. The Dutch beat the pirates. And it's a great win, and our ships don't have to take any damage. Over here in Nassau, we're going to take the Colonial Dragoons and put them in Grand Bahama. So that garrison is the port. It protects it from raiding. Now we're going to move these troops over to join them. And what we're going to do from there is bring them down. Uh, I guess bring them up, technically. We could bring them up. We could bring the troops from Port Royal up to Grand Bahama. Merge them and then take them up to meet the wonderful Iroquois in the battle. Let's uh, first off the bat recruit two line infantry down in Port Royal. We're probably going to get one, two, three, four. Probably going to get four down there before we have to go and fight. Because we have one already here, which gives us a fifth. And that's pretty much all we need to do the Iroquois. Next up here in Moose Factory, I always build a Hessian line. Now we can only build five of these, but they're going to be absolutely essential in beating back the Huron. Uh, we also wait a turn. We can recruit a better general than the one it gives us uh, at first. We do need to make sure that this province becomes fully Protestant, so we'll move our missionary, Robert Watson, down to the border, and then he's going to pop over when he's done to go and spy on the Huron. We've also got Isaac Newton, the man himself. He's going to research canister shot and make our demi cannons actually useful. James Whitson's our spy. He's going to go and he's going to load on to the fleet uh, for whenever we send our army out to engage some enemies. Now I believe that's pretty much all we've done for opening moves. So what we're going to do now 
is in all of our ports, especially in Europe here, we're going to build sloops. They're a very cheap boat, and they're pretty, pretty cheap to upkeep, only 140 pounds. So we're going to keep one of these in all our ports to protect against enemy raids. We don't need it in Portsmouth. Another one over here. Don't need one up there. We definitely need one in the Bahamas and in Jamaica. Alright, so that's got us pretty protected now. We've still got 11.59 to spend. We're getting 45.70 on the next turn. And what can we do from here? We could indeed build some pretty small stuff that could be helpful. Now, let's build this $300 peasant farm. There we go. And anything else we can build? Yeah, another one over here in Abitibi. So we'll build that. I don't think anymore. That's all we can do. We don't need to worry about recruiting stuff in London just yet. We'll hold off on that for a little bit so that we can let our economy build. Okay, this ends us off for the first turn. And let's go ahead and end it and see if the usual, uh, usual nonsense takes place. And there it is. The Iroquois attack our colonies. We'll enter war on their side. Here it is. The Anagwin the first is going to invade us. We don't need to call our allies. It's really not not necessary. The war begins. Well, that's interesting. And there's our mission issued to capture regions. Doing this will allow the 13 colonies to become part of our, our nation. And we have to capture Georgia, the Cherokee Territory, and New France. The leaders of the 13 colonies do indeed suggest that we ensure the future dominion of Britain in the Americas by consolidating our control over the surrounding area. If we succeed in capturing the regions of Georgia, Cherokee Territory, and New France, the 13 colonies will be ours to command. Huzzah! Be sure to maintain friendly relations with them until this union is secured. Sounds spiffy. Nova Britannia, what indeed? Captain William Dampier of HMS Roebuck has returned from a voyage of exploration in the southern latitudes, where he has been engaged in mapping several coastlines around New South Wales and the former Spanish possession of Nova Guinea. As an experienced seaman, having circumnavigated the world during his time as a buccaneer, he found himself marooned with a shipmate on a South Sea island and escaped by building a raft, eventually returning to England with nothing but the clothes he wore and his journals. Well, it looks like he had a bit of a saucy adventure, didn't he? The Dutch and Spanish are tickling each other with sticks like usual. Prussia and Austria, there's that big explosion. Poland and Austria, see what I mean? We could have been part of that. And our wonderful farms are here to give us a bit more money and provincial growth and to make sure people don't starve. <laughs> Oh, so it looks like, I don't know, the pirates must have fought somebody. It wasn't the Dutch, because for some reason this time that didn't happen. First time that's ever happened where it actually didn't, didn't, uh, wasn't a thing. So let's make sure we build two more of these line infantry down here. And we will bring our troops up. There we go. Go up here to Moose Factory and recruit another Hessian line. And here we'll make the general. See? Benedict Thorne, a soldier from birth and a happy drinker, giving us a plus one to morale. I think he's terrific. Yeah. Move him down here more. And we should have one more turn until the Huron get up here to attack us. So we should have two units of Hessian line for the battle. I do presume. Now, over here in Europe... I should have done this last term, but we're going to destroy that church school and turn it into another college. That's going to help us research a lot quicker and, and uh, more effectively. Keep moving our troops down to join up with John Churchill, also known as the Duke of Marlborough. And their family uh, given the Blenheim Palace there for his victory at the Battle of Blenheim. Very big win. 
We are going to call him in the game the Duke of Marlborough. Because he is, and he's our best friend. We're also going to name... Ooh, plus three to morale. He's pretty good. <clears throat> Henri de Mas. Funny little frog in our employ. Obviously, he has common sense being with us. Down here, we also have General McDowell. No idea who he is. Don't know if he is anybody. Up here, we have our wonderful new man, Benedict Thorn. And he's going to become a thorn in the side of the Huron when they attack. Very spiffy. Right. What else can we make? I think what we should do now is focus on maybe some of our stuff up here. Oh, can we get a... We already have one there. Okay. We need a barracks up in Scotland, but let's not do it yet. Let's focus on getting conservatorium and a governor's residence in Dublin. Try and build up those towns. Right. Things are looking pretty, pretty spiffy. There's this frog fleet here. Shouldn't be too much of a match for our ships, really. Not too shabby. Let's see what happens over here. Oh, yes, we can put that in there. Right. And as we speed through, what did I predict? Tota Potomoy is here. And we have our unit of Hessians. We're going to recruit another one. They are going to siege us. We'll let them do that, but we will come out to attack them. And I usually win it, so hopefully. Ah, Captain Kidd. The notorious buccaneer William Kidd has finally been brought to justice on five counts of piracy and murder. Gee, he's greedy. Unfortunately, miscalculations on the part of the hangman meant Kidd had to be hanged a second time as his body weight broke the first rope. <laughs> Too fat. But now his gibbet swings in the breeze overlooking the Thames, an example to would-be pirates everywhere. Despite this, there remain some who mutter darkly that Kid's, he, Kid's honor remains intact, and that he is innocent, and that his fate was sealed when he tangled with the Machiavellian men of the East India Company. We may never know for sure where the truth lies, as we may never be certain where Kid's fabled hoard of priceless treasures buried. I want to find it because I want money. All right, we should be able to move. Yes. Our troops are good to go. Put him in the bits and take him up to Bahama. Then we'll load up those troops and then we'll head up to fight the Iroquois. Agama. Pontiac. Usually they take like Albany or Boston or something. So we'll see what they do. Now we are able to build some more stuff. Keep moving on way down to London. Wonderful. Yes. We need to build the school here in Oxford. Oxford and Cambridge, two very uh, very popular educational facilities. Then we're going to build them up in our empire, of course. Now, is there anything else tidbitty that we can put together? Not really. No. Even recruitment is off. So we've done all we can this turn. And we will go ahead and see what happens with the Huron up here. Very likely a bit of a bashing. Here they come. Yes, as expected. We've got our canister shot. Isn't that cute? Yeah, they siege this piss. Right, so next we're going to plug Bayonet so that we can get to ring Bayonet as quick as we can. Drake gained Isaac Newton. Hey, isn't that lovely? A, a lunatic. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and apparently the Duke of Marlborough has a stupid nephew. Gives him plus two to morale in battle for some reason. And the smallpox inoculation. Now since the dawn of time, smallpox has stalked mankind. Killing one in three of those infected. Yay, COVID. And leaving many survivors permanently scarred, impotent, that sucks, or even blinded, 
eh. Its victims in this century alone number countless millions. Oh, this is nasty. The shadow of death has now receded from Europe in the light of wisdom from the East. Though originally treated with skepticism by the West, rumors that a preventative method used in India, China, parts of Africa, and now the Ottoman Empire have finally been proved correct. Yay! The process involves grinding the scabs from a smallpox victim's skin to a powder, then blowing them up the recipient's nose, or rubbing infected pus into a small skin lesion. That sounds terrific. Always wanted to experience it. Having endured a mild form of the disease, the patient will then enjoy immunity, or just occasionally an agonizing death. Hopefully not the latter, if you've got it. That sucks. Right, so we need to take care of that battle this turn. Let's go ahead and load up our army. There we go. And set sail. They did Boston this time. Set sail for Boston and deal with Pontiac and his petunias. They are indeed ravaging our soul over here in London. Anything else fairly small that we can build? The cannon foundry. We probably should, but not just yet. That there's the time and the place for it, and it's not right now. Oh, we really should build these um, iron workshops. Look at that, plus 1050 to region wealth, and then plus 8 per turn to town wealth. Yes, it's 2,000. It is, but it is worth it. Now, also over here, where is it? It's on one of these islands. This one. Sugar and coffee plantation. Which one is worth more in the market? Cotton is 15. They're the same. I think we'll go for, uh, oh, sorry, not cotton, coffee, sugar or coffee, ah, uh, yeah, the, the sugar's worth more. <clears throat> so let's flood the market with sugar from the Bahamas. Now we are able to build one more thing here, and, oh dear, <laughs> we accidentally took a sloop that we weren't supposed to take. Well, we'll bring him back down. And let's build one of these places. The Opera House. The Opera House in Scotland. Sure, that'll make them pretty happy. They like to sing a song. Now that we've finished all our, our turn uh, bits and pieces, as it were, let's go and attack Toto. Now we do have some garrison troops of Firelock Armed Citizens. They're not terrific but they bolster us a bit. We're almost even in numbers. They've got the bloody bowmen. Now I swear, when you use bowmen and archers in this game, the jack shit. But when the AI gets it, they fucking knock you off left, right, and center. It's like going to a shooting gallery. They're just no scoping with these bows. One hit, no scopes. Fucking Toto. We're gonna get him. We're gonna get him. Let's save it as, no, not that one. I was doing something on that one. Uh, let's call it British Vanilla Ice Cream. Because we all like a vanilla ice cream. Let's go to the field. And here we are. Interesting field. I'd say if we rush forward, this hill could be useful to us. So let's put our Hessians here. And we'll utilize this hill as much as we can. Now, our firelock arm citizenry. We'll put them on the right. We should probably do them in two ranks. Now, in this in vanilla, <clears throat> because we don't have fire by rank yet, and those goodies, um, they all the, only the front rank shoot. So only our front rank is going to fire. That's why I'm extending everybody quite a bit. And we've got our pikemen. We're going to put them in the center. Make them versatile. Over there. And then the rangers are going to go on our left flank. There we go. They're pretty accurate. They're good troops. And then we got Benedict. 
I'm going to use him as a bit of cavalry because it's quite good. All right. Move it up. Nice and quick. Let us use this wonderful hill. I love the advantage. Armed citizenry needs to move up too. The pikemen are probably going to play with those cavalry. Oh, well, their chief's bodyguard. Ah, I see. Let's move them up into the woods. Along with Benedict. Not Benedict Arnold, Benedict Thorn. He's going to be a thorn in their side. Here come our brave defenders of Rupert's land. A very mixed army. Very, uh, very traditional force. Hessians. Most notable for the service in the American Revolutionary War. Very brutal. Brutal mercenaries. And, you know, it's October, so... We love a, a good story of a headless Hessian riding around on a horse. Murdering people. Right. They're probably not going to come to us. As annoying as that might be. And yes, you can run your troops quite a bit in vanilla. He's probably around here in these trees. It is highly likely that is where they are sitting. I don't want to lose the advantage of this hill, but... I mean... If they start moving towards us, we can always pull back and use the hill. I mean, that's an option, right? Let's move up the pikemen, rangers, move them up on that hill. You might be able to fire down into the flank, and that would be saucy, wouldn't it? Yes. Come on, Benedict. You got some killing to do. I don't know, I feel like they're... They must be pretty far back. Alright. Let's keep moving up then. If we've not discovered them yet... We should be discovering them pretty soon. Where could they be? Oh, that was sucky. Get the rangers up on that. That's a brilliant hill. Love that. And it looks like our armed citizenry actually get a pretty good hill up here, too. So let's move them up to use that full advantage. So where in the world are they? Are they just sitting around somewhere? They must be. They must just be sitting around... Like some lazy bums. There they are. Okay. We have discovered them. Get you guys up here. They're all just sitting there. Move up, everyone. Move up. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting one right there. Open fire at will, please, Hessians. There we go. Pikemen, get in on those warriors. Firelock citizens, move yourselves into a better firing position. Yeah, see what I mean? See what I mean by the bowmen? Let's bring the general around back. We might be able to get those bowmen. Wait, holy shit. Wow. <laughs> okay. Firelock citizens aren't shooting very much. Move up our Hessians a bit. Oh, looks like they're charging their bowmen at our rangers. OK, 
Okay, we can send the general in the back. All right, very good. Use our general to attack their bowmen in the rear. Wow, our, our armed citizens are actually holding their ground pretty good. Wow. So if we attack them in the flank with the armed citizenry. There, yeah. The bowmen ain't liking that too much, are they? Pull the general out. And let the rangers deal with the bowmen. I think we can charge the rear. We Let our rangers fire. Oh yes, we killed their general. Excellent. Yeah, now they're just gonna have a mass panic. Ha 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 ha. Absolutely glorious. Let's make sure that we, we run them down. Keep charging, my brave lads. Keep charging. Continue. I want to erase them from the map. There's a lot of those bowmen left. Keep going, boys. Keep going. There we go. A close victory. I thought that was pretty decisive. We did bloody good there. Look at that. They pretty much lost their army. And we only lost 168 men. So that's excellent. And what we're going to do now is we're going to wait for that new unit of Hessians. Yeah, it's going to take a bit to replenish that. Replenish that, get those Hessians, and then pursue them. And now they got Jalalamend. Interesting name. <laughs> right, so we're going now to uh, continue to the next turn. Alliance broken between Prussia and Poland. Sucky sucky. I sense another certain person doing something. The Daily Courant. With only a single page containing just two columns, the Daily Courant may not seem like much. But it is the first daily newspaper in the world. Uh-oh. Fake news. Edward Mollett has published this groundbreaking page from his rooms located above the White Hart Pub on Fleet Street. Consisting purely of foreign news items in order to avoid government interference, the publication carries no comment from the editor himself. As Mallet says, Other people have sense enough to make reflections for themselves. This new source of daily information will surely only be the first of many newspapers to do so. Love the tidbits of history we get. And Saxony got destroyed. Who by? Prussia. Yeah, that seems right. Hey, and Georgie is our royal heir. A fine son. Hey, the Hessians are here. You might be asking yourselves, why are we just sitting in London with this army? when we could use them in uh, America or something. That's because we're going to use it to counter the French. We are still going to have to fight in Europe pretty early on, as it's very likely the French may declare war on us. It has happened. Let's take the John Leake Navy. Why don't we just go here? <laughs> and then go to Boston. There we go. Now we want to do this pretty quick so that it eliminates the United States from becoming a country. We don't want to deal with that. All right, now we can go mop up these guys. Let's go ahead and attack them. They should be pretty easy to get rid of. Only 74 against our 665. And we'll go ahead with the vanilla ice cream. War makes rattling good history. But peace is poor reading. And that was the quote in our wonderful loading screen. Right, how are we going to tackle them this time? It'll be even easier this time. Let's put our troops up on this hill. 
There we go. And our pikemen on the right. They took quite a bit of the brunt of the battle last time. Our rangers on the left. That's the usual setup I like to do here in America. Let the general support the rangers for a bit more sturdiness. Right, Dio? Let's go. I don't think we have very much to fear from this, uh, this Huron force. It's pretty much the defeated remnants of what we murdered when they attacked us at Rupert's Land. See, vanilla's not too bad. And actually, by using the, uh, the reshade, it makes it quite, quite acceptable. This is pretty good. It's not bad. Still love Empire 2 with the mod and do my Darth mod stuff, but you can never quite beat that vanilla experience. I think we can extend you guys a bit more. Yeah. Get more firepower in the field. Pikemen. Bring them up here. Make sure they're still able to support to get through. And the rangers on the flank. Along with Mr. Benedict. Saucy stuff. Looking pretty, pretty nice so far. See, a lot of people try to uh, avoid this war with the Huron. But, you know, I take advantage of it. Because we can easily win. You just have to do the right thing with a nice combination of tactics. And then after that, you're able to capture the Huron's uh, main territory there. And so say Marie. And then from that, they're pretty much done for. So they got York Factory, but that's quite far and uh, I doubt they're going to be sending anything at you from there. There we go. Keep wrapping around them here. It's a nice, dirty little trick. Spread this unit here. Pikemen in support. Now, I didn't check to see if they still had bowmen. It doesn't really matter. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Get ready for some shots. There we go. Nice. Very nice. Yes, unfortunately, let's counter him with our general. I think they got, they got two of our rangers. They're getting three of them now. The cavalry, the general's bodyguard is pretty good. Okay, there they are. There are his troops and they do have the bun. Okay. Let's move up and take advantage of this, this elevated terrain. Let's go in nice and quick. Yeah, five left of their, uh, their cavalry there. Not really, not really an issue. Get this fresh Hessian regiment to flank a bit. Okay, they got bowmen in the woods. We're gonna need to send the pikemen forward to clear it out. There we go, we're shooting at their bowmen. There they are, pikemen charge. As well as you, my Hessians. Yeah, we got them pretty good there. They're running, they're scared shitless. Take you people off fire at will. And we're going to make sure that we try and, uh, hold on. Run down the remnants of his little army. Because we don't want them hanging around. Oof. I think our cavalry actually knocked out a couple Hessians there. Sucks. Go for the other bowmen now. 
they're pretty well done for. I don't think they'd come back. Oh, come on. Come on, Mr. General. Get at it. They're nearing the end of the map. Here we come. Slaughter them. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah. We got we got a good amount. I don't think they're going to come back from that. War is the trade of kings, and that is by John Dryden. We only lost 12, and they've only got 18 remaining. Yeah. Decimated. Love it. Let's replenish this army and recruit another Hessian. And then once our army is bolstered a bit, under Protestant, let's move down here and spy. Yeah, they don't really have too much. Just recruit a couple more units here and then we can go ahead and attack. It is now safe to build the governor's residence in Moose Factory. That should help the town a bit. And then we're going to take McDowell and take Boston. And everything else is looking pretty spiffy. I think we're doing, uh, doing quite well. Can we build any ships? We can build a sixth rate. Let's go ahead and do that in Portsmouth. It's good to bolster our navy in, in Europe. Just to uh, help counter any frog things that we might experience. But anyway, this ends us off for the first part of our vanilla playthrough in Empire Total War with Great Britain. Thank you very much for watching. It's a blast to go back to vanilla sometimes. It has its perks. It's got its moments. It was revolutionary when it came out. And it brings back childhood memories. You know, I got this when, when I was 11 or so. We went to Florida. And we just happened to come across the boxed collection in Target. It was the, the gold edition. All the DLCs for Empire Total War and Napoleon Total War. And the base games. For a terrific price. We jumped on it. And I brought it home and I, pl I must have played it for hours. For so many years. Non-stop. Empire and Napoleon. And then... You know, you'd take your days off school to play the game. You would stay on the game a bit too long in the morning and then be late. And then come home from school and immediately turn it on and not have dinner yet. So those things happen when you're a kid. And we're like 24 now, so... These things happen, and it's a great experience, and the memories, they flood back to you. It's, it's a real novelty. The nostalgia is a real smacker. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be continuing our 13 colonies and our Ottoman campaigns in Empire Total War II at the same time, so we're flipping between files here. <laughs> the things I do to help you, to entertain. Thank you. Ta-ta! The British are here. Mm-hmm.